YouTube, happy Friday. I'm back in my living room. The last two vlogs have been on the road, so sitting back here kind of feels weird. But today we're gonna to talk about politics. Are you political? Do you hate politics? Do you already wanna turn this video off? Well, don't. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. All right, that big crazy word, politics. So many times today you'll walk around, you'll hear somebody say, I'm not political or, Yes, let's talk about the state of our union right now. And uh, a lot of people, you guys watch from all over the world, so I know it's different in every country. And uh, some countries, you have to vote. You don't really have much of a choice in this situation. You either you have incentives to get paid or you get fined. In America, it's not as completely up to you unless you have been convicted of a felon or stuff like this. There is certain reasons why you may not be eligible to vote in each state is a little bit different. Some states require an ID. So if you are an elderly person and you no longer have an ID and you can't afford to get an ID, you may not be able to vote. Or if you're incredibly poor and can't afford an ID, you may not be able to vote. So although every American technically has the right to vote as soon as they turn 18, we do apply a lot of restrictions. And then on top of that, we suppress the vote a lot in certain areas, or we gerrymander where your vote doesn't really count or we do something like an electoral college where even though New York City has millions of people, by far the most in all of the country, my vote's not quite as important as somebody else's vote in a different city. It's in a different city, maybe in the South or something like that. So we have lots of archaic rules, lots of weird stuff that makes this whole process even more bizarre. And we'll get to all of that. I was not a very political person when I was younger, and younger being middle school, high school, I didn't have political people in my life to encourage me. Really, the only person I had was my maternal grandmother, and we always kind of saw the world different politically. We never really saw eye to eye, so we were kind of rivals. And then when I really started coming into my own in high school and I was doing these broadcast journalism pro projects, I started kind of learning about the world around me and how important it is to be aware of it because it does affect your life. But that still was not enough to get me into politics and registered to vote out there and voting. Um, because when I did come of age to vote, it was in the Bush era and I lived in Texas. And so really all I knew of Bush was he was from Texas. I support him in that regard. Uh, and then obviously a lot of bad stuff started happening under the Bush era and uh, it was kind of hard to still want to stand by him. At this time, I didn't really have an understanding of Republican and Democrat, independent, any of that stuff. So to say that Bush was a Republican, that's why I was supported. None of that existed in my realm. So fast forward in college, still not too political and towards the end of it, I get this roommate that I move in with who absolutely is all about politics, all about trying to change America for the better, this and this. And she's always watching C-SPAN. I remember coming home from work and being like, Carly, why are we watching C-SPAN? Can we please watch something else? She loved Harry Potter, so I could always get her on to Harry Potter. Be like, Harry Potter? Yes. Um, so at that time, I was always thought she was crazy. I'm like, why are you doing this? It's meaningless. And over the course of the year that I lived with her, she slowly got me more and more involved. To show you how backwards my brain was at this time, something like gay marriage. She said, Chaz, this is something that is a voting issue. You know, who we put into office can directly affect this. And at that time I was like, well, what do I care? What if gays never get married? Oh, well, whatever. So stupid. I mean, my mind wasn't open enough to even think about my own self in that regard. I was so focused on, I'm working three jobs. <laughs> I'm trying to keep my own life afloat. What does the president of the United States have anything to do with my life? Forget congressmen, senators. I wasn't even aware of all of that and the impact that had on my life. A state senator, I didn't know that existed. And over that year, she showed me and she opened my eyes. So eventually I did get registered to vote. Well, in that year I got registered vote. I figured out the difference between Democrat and Republican and Independent and I eventually ended up going and voting for Obama and I paid attention to Obama's campaign. I became very active and I wanted to learn more. He did inspire me. I loved his speeches. Starting a movement that spread across the country, a movement made up of young and old and rich and poor and black and white, Latino, Asian, Native American, gay, straight, Democrats, Republicans, who believe we've all got something to contribute. I will say though, when I showed up to the voting booth, I was purely expecting to vote for Obama at this point in time in 2008. 
And all of a sudden, it started asking me about for school people, school board people, I mean, all of the X, Y, Z, and I felt so stupid. I went into the voting booth, not expecting any of this, and I walked out thinking, oh my God, I didn't do my due diligence. I'm not doing my civil duty. I should have researched before I got in and uh, known who I was actually voting for other than Obama. And after that, I told myself, every election that comes now, you're gonna be more actively involved and you're gonna research these people's platforms. And I did. And all the way up to this present election is probably the one that I got the most involved in. Uh, with Bernie's campaign, doing phone banks, going and knocking on doors, um, all kinds of stuff like that, which was way outside of my comfort zone. It's something I never, ever thought in a million years I'd want to do. But the what got me, the moment that sold me to become a political person, to want to talk about politics, was the fact of how much it has an impact on your life. And we forget that. In the age that we're living in now, if you are somebody that wants to have children, you have children, you should be political because it directly will affect you and your children's life. Climate change is a huge issue that faces our country right now that will dramatically, dramatically affect their life. If you're not voting, you're not helping your kids out in any way. There's so many more issues besides just climate change, but this being the most catastrophic, I'm using it. It's hard not to become political when we keep allowing people who don't care about your, your children's future. They care about the money they can make now, they care about the money their donors can make now, or their political class can do right now. We have, and, and where I'm going with all of this is and what got me started with this video, is that lately, as I've been traveling a lot, as you guys have seen, um, I've talked to people. I love talking to people, picking their brains, seeing where they're at. And a lot of people right now are becoming disengaged. You know, it was kind of after that Hillary lost, Trump won, um, there was this energy that was kind of like a no. And now that we're as far in as we're in, people are just getting tired. People are, are, are confused. People don't understand um, the other side. I mean, we now, what's left in America of the, the people who are still adamant Trump supporters and the people who, let's say, never have been Trump supporters or the people who have left the Trump train. We are so divided because we no longer can even see each other's side. You know, politics was about working together and coming together for a better future. It's supposed to be of the people, for the people, by the people. These things have gotten lost. And because of this, the people are feeling disengaged and pulling away further. It seems like this learned helplessness or apathy, just the giving up, if we keep doing that, more people who shouldn't be in office are going to get in office. But if we're able to remind ourselves of why politics is so important, the impact that it has on your life daily, from the taxes you pay, to your children's future, to your future, to the future of your country, when we keep that cognizant in the front of our brain and we at least do the bare minimum of showing up to vote, at least we're putting our two cents in. There's so much more that we need to do than voting, you know, actually calling our senators, writing our senators, all of this other stuff. But you have to do step one to even get to these other ones because if we're not paying attention to who we're putting into office, we can write them all the letters we want. They're not going to do anything because they're not there to represent you, they're there to represent the opposition. And, you know, talking to everybody who just seems kind of in the depressed state of our union, you know, like, I don't know how we're ever going to come back together. We see the world so vastly different than the other side or they won. They've already won. Trump's going to get elected again. You know, we're going to be in this crazy, this is the <laughs> downfall of America. And I think it's easy to get caught up in that. And to be honest with you, uh, <laughs> As I travel, the more and more people I talk to and they're telling me the same story, it is kind of hard to each time come up with this optimistic approach and like, no, we can do it. We have overcome so much in my lifetime. I've seen how far we've come in gay rights and we can do this. You know, each time a, a part of me dies a little because there's so many people I'm talking to that it just feels so done and just wanting to be disconnected to the political section, the uh, connection because they believe that we can't talk, we can't see each other's sides anymore, we can't uh, agree to disagree, and that's sad. I don't know what happened in our country, and I know this is other parts of the world too, but it became a moment where we've lost each other. We've lost seeing each other as humans. We've lost seeing each other as still wanting the best thing for our country, but maybe seeing it from a different light. 
you're more conservative, I'm a little more progressive. Fine, let's find how we can come together and still try to make this country the great, I was about to say the greatest, but it comes way too close to make America great again. Um, but let's make America a country we can be proud of, a country that we can boast on the world stage. We have that power, we just have to stand up and take it back and talk to each other. I mean, I, if we're not ever gonna talk to each other, we're not gonna ever try to go into a conversation with an open mind with somebody who vastly disagrees with us, nothing's gonna happen. The truth is, if you try to always come from a place of compassion and niceness, the ones that you can get across to, you get across, we have a conversation, we find some middle ground, beautiful. The ones that we never will, always try to be as nice as you can and go about your business and they'll do them, we'll do us, and we'll see each other next Friday. <laughs> please subscribe, please comment, let me know your thoughts. Next week, it's gonna be back on the road again, weather permitting. It's been really crazy rainy off and on here in New York and Devin and I are supposed to go on a hike and I'm gonna take the camera along with us, but the weather is kind of back and forth, so I don't know what next week holds. But if you subscribe, put on those notifications, you stay tuned, you'll get to know as well. You do you, I'll do me, and I'll see you next Friday. Thank you.